the Earth is big, really, really big. The torsion, however, is very, very small. And unlike other small niche activities like football, soccer, and the Olympic Games, there is no centralised spot. I am an amateur contortionist, and I'm on an adventure. My goal is to discover these hidden communities, to learn their secret training techniques, and to find out exactly what keeps them going when overdose not painkillers is no longer a viable option. My name is Christian Ledbetter, and this is my journey. My journey begins in Melbourne, where the second ever annual Australian Contortion Arts and Hand Balancing Festival <gasps> is taking place. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Australian Contortion and Hand Balancing Festival. Mim and I met on Contortionists Unite, and um, we sort of talked about you know how the sort of the, a lack of training available in Australia. I'd just come from the Australian unicycling competition and decided that we needed something like that for contortion. She, she had the idea that um, we would actually create a festival because there's other festivals out there for everything else like there's a juggling convention and you know all sorts of other conventions for other circus things but nothing for contortion. So last year we actually had our first contortion and hand balancing festival in Coffs Harbour. I became involved because um, I was asked to go there um, and to give a presentation. It was a pretty casual affair. Um, we had a small turnout, um, probably you know uh, about 13 people I think came to the first festival. There weren't a lot of people there but then that just goes to show you that it is really an art form, that it's not mainstream and that it is just for the select few. And it was really good first festival to get some kind of community happening. It was great to connect with other like-minded people. That was fantastic. Yeah, and we just tried to sort of have a bit, bit of everything for everyone, pretty much. And so we're at the second one now in Melbourne and we're looking to have a third one in Brisbane, hopefully. Still, before we start thinking too far ahead, while the first Australian Annual Contortion Arts and Hand Balancing Festival may not have been quite as packed out as the organisers were hoping, the smaller crowd gave it more of a family feel. This directly affected the recent Australian Annual Contortion and we were amazed to find out how much the people we'd met the year before had improved, and I'm sure they were equally as amazed to find that I, well, hadn't. The, the first festival I really felt that I did not um, promote it enough. Really we needed to make more of an effort to just get the word out to let everyone know that the festival is happening. So the first thing that was on my mind was I really wanted to be able to contact every circus school around Australia and you know what, whoever else is interested in flexibility and really let them know about the festival and, and my personal sort of thing that I feel about contortion especially in Australia is everyone is so disparate and, and everyone kind of feels alone and you know like that they are the only people that, that are doing this. For years and years and years and years I felt like I was the only contortionist in the whole world. And I really really felt that um, I just wanted to bring everybody together to one place and just sort of start creating a network and just making people realise that they're not alone. You know, I'm not just talking about contortionists, I'm talking about um, pole dancers particularly interested in um, flexibility, for instance. Um, you know, I, I contacted the gymnastic schools, just all the circus schools as well. The other thing that, that was sort of my key point was um, I wanted to do just like step it up a level this time to make it more professional. 
Last year we just performed at the circus school. This year I, I actually have used a professional um, performance venue that is actually used for circus. Um, it has regular circus performances there quite often. Hi, Kickstarts, the Australian Hand Battle Tip. Hand Contortion Festival is running for four days and it's jam-packed with contorting feats of strength, beauty and stupidity. In terms of performances, well, that was actually Mim's uh, bag this year. So she's actually spent her time organising the performers and, and sorting out um, who would be good for our performance list. So we've got a lot of performers from Aerialicious. We found them through Tammy. I've been an aerialist for nine years. I now run our business called Aerialicious. And um, we also subcontract a number of other performers and aerialists. Some of the performers, Jacinta and April, I know them, I've seen them perform and I think they're amazing, which is why I actually recommended them to Mim. I'm April, and or April Dawson, and I've been working as a contortionist for 12 years now. So I started when I was 15, I was picked up, I was doing some dance performing on the street. Happened to be that there was a guy from a circus there that saw me doing what I was doing and um, offered me a job and I joined the circus the following week with a solo contortion act. Uh, Christine, we, we obviously from last year's festival, um, happy to have her anytime, she's great. The reason I enjoyed that show is because of the mix of the audience, that some of them were there and they, they were learning contortion themselves or they were learning gymnastics, but the others that were there, there was a wedding party there, who had actually never seen contortion before. I reckon everyone should get married at least once. I mean, you can't go through life just enjoying yourselves, can you? I was really, really happy with it. I was, um, I was really calm and relaxed, actually. I wasn't stressed at all. That came later. <laughs> Luckily, Mim was running the show, and, and I was able to sit back and watch it. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. You know, like, I was looking at my own show thinking, I am so happy about this. This is, this is something I've put together and it was just sort of that moment with, oh, I have done this. And, and just the standard just blew me away. That first show to me, it just put the festival on the map straight away. This is, this is the Australian Contortion Festival and we're serious, you know, we're not just mucking around here. We're, this, we're serious about making this great. you can train your little heart out, but unless genetics happen to be particularly kind to you at the time of your birth, you will never be a true contortionist. To be a contortionist you need to first of all have a certain kind of a body and um, you need to have the type of body that's flexible. Uh, most of it's natural, like I, I feel like I've been blessed with, with the flexibility. You know, if you haven't got that kind of body, you're never going to be able to, to be a contortionist, so you're setting yourself up for failure. I really had to push for my flexibility. Um, I'd been a dancer for many years, so I sort of had my right leg split nearly, but I had to work quite hard to get all my splits and my back bend was awful. But having said that, um, you will be able to become more flexible than what you are, so you, you will be able to gain some flexibility. I remember seeing a contortionist and thinking, that chest stand, that's not real, that's an edited photo. Oh yeah, that picture was so doctored. It isn't um, so, matter, um, so much a matter of what you're doing, <laughs> it's the way that you do it. I had no previous experience in dance or gymnastics and anything. I played soccer and I went and joined a circus and just committed to it. One example is, uh, is um, Christian. What? Is, is not the most flexible person in the world, but... Go on. Put together an act uh, which was just fantastic. Um, with, with comedy, with Andrew, it was just... I loved that act that uh, Christian and Andrew did. What? I managed to impress a world famous contortionist? Huh. Oh well, strike off that excuse then. Everyone that attended the second Australian annual quickly discovered that it was a festival split into two parts. The first part was for the beginners, or the people who were just curious about flexibility, with workshops on safe stretching and gentle classes designed to teach the basics. I know there's people who'd love to come, 
um, but they're just a little bit scared about, you know, like, you know, are you going to break me? <laughs> um, I'm just a beginner. Uh, you know, I've never done this before. I don't know what to do about that yet um, to actually get the word out that it is possible for, you know, not complete beginners, but, you know, beginner contortion people. You don't need to be sort of Zlatter or something, an extremely uh, flexible person or anything to be able to do this. As, as, as a student, you know, I, I would love to be able to attend a festival that just welcomes everybody, which is why I set up the beginner into advanced level, you know, and, and particularly stressing beginners are um, invited. We're going to work through some different um, ideas to increase your flexibility and increase stretching. So for someone like you, you're already quite hypermobile. For others who aren't as bendy, how to safely stretch and how to get more flexible. The other part of 2AACHHF was for the advanced contortionists who were there to take their skills to a professional level. I came here to teach um, aerial contortion. Just going to the classroom you have to go to the classes, stay after the classes, go to every space and time and just keep training until someone notices you. Film and photograph as much as you can um, and then just start showing people. And you know, make DVDs, go through your phone book, send stuff out. Most people will never like that. Um, but you just sort of have to do that to get your name out there. <laughs> Still, regardless of which path you chose, it all built up to a single climax with one final performance. Then we had the student showcase, um, which is actually designed for the students of the festival to actually put on what they've learnt from um, throughout the festival and, and just to try something, you know, try something new. You know, there's almost no point in saying that you're wanting to be a contortionist if you're learning stuff but then you're not performing it. If you perform then you've got something to work on and contortion is all about having an act. You can't really do that with training, it's sort of like okay that's you training. Um, so, so I think that's a really important aspect. Wait, hang on. I don't actually have an act. Well yeah okay sure so I put one together with Andrew but it's not really something I can practice in my own time. Huh. How does one put together a solo contortion act? Well, you look at my act, and my act is the old-fashioned, I suppose, classic style contortion routine, because I haven't changed my style ever. I like to find a piece of music that I like first. With the music changes the style of the routine. Music can really sort of give you the inspiration and set the theme and the mood of your piece. I think that the contortions today have a music that's just got like a certain beat or so on, but many of them don't actually work to the music. I really hate to see that when it's like the music goes boom, 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 and you're like stretching slowly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like this. You don't have to be an amazing contortionist to pull off a, an entertaining routine. Right, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter how good your chick is. Yeah. It's not entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, girls, the best advice I was ever given was from this 80 year old old acrobat guy up in Cairns and his advice was don't think about all the things you want to do <laughs> with these amazing tricks, use what you can do yep. and then just just change them out so when you can do that awesome trick yep. just take the one that you don't like out and put it in. Sometimes we have a routine that we've used for a number, number of things but a lot of the time we have routines where we have to um, make up a new routine for every gig. Um, you can use you can use props as as um, I think something to, to add to the story and the thing. A handstand, an elbow stand, a chest stand can all look really simple. So it's really nice if you look at your skills and go, those three tricks look really similar. So break them up. Your best asset is your face. Yeah. Always your face. All too soon it was all over, gone for another year, and while I may not have been the most active participant at a chat, having spent most of my time filming this, the time spent at this festival was used to form new friendships and allowed me to identify unwitting victims, uh, I, I mean uh, uh, willing, willing participants, 
for the next phase of my journey around the world. We're definitely going to have a festival again. Um, we, we are potentially talking about maybe Brisbane next year. My dream for the Australian Contortion Festival is actually to have some international guests coming here. We, we went to the International Contortion Convention and um, you know, we talked to everyone there and they would love to come to Australia so you know, we would love to have the whole world to come to the Australian Contortion Festival and, and see what we have to offer. You know, I want to just keep stepping it up every year and if I can make that happen that would be just a dream come true. Yeah, I really hope to see you there at the festival, 2012 Australian Contortion Festival. Or Arch for short. Be there. Uh, actually, 2012 won't have a festival. Yeah, it was decided to move it back to 2013. So, check the website for more details on that one. At least the logo makes more sense now.